Welcome to Inbox Segment Part 11, where I'll try and answer all your questions. VA3 RSO wanted to know if a 10 meter squid pole was suitable for a 40 meter ground plane. The answer is yes, 10 meters is almost exactly a quarter wave. But if you can only do 9 meters, that doesn't matter very much. You can just use an antenna coupler to make up the difference. Nelson Martin wanted to know whether the Beach 40 double sideband transceiver can also be made to transmit CW. The answer is it can, but there's a few modifications and it may not be the best way to do it. The receiver being direct conversion will be fine, its selectivity will be broad, but it will still receive CW signals okay. As for the transmitter, you do need to unbalance the balance modulator to produce a carrier. The other thing you need to do is to be able to key the carrier. There's several different methods, but one could include interrupting the power supply to the RF final transistor. You can do that very crudely by putting a key in the supply line, though it's much better to use a PNP switching transistor like a BD140 instead. The third thing you need to attend to is the transmit receive frequency offset. You can do that manually by hand adjusting the tuning control by 1 kHz or so every time you go from transmit to receive, but that's awkward. The other thing you need to look out for is the frequency coverage. In most countries, CW is found in different parts of the band to SSB. If you are using a 7.2 MHz ceramic resonator in your Beach 40, then you'll be covering the SSB part of the band, where most CW enthusiasts won't be. So you do need to sort out something else, maybe a Crystal VXO that covers the CW end of the band. When you've added all those things up, I think you'll find it's much easier to leave the Beach 40 alone and build a dedicated CW direct conversion transceiver. Wally S on circuit boards. No, it's not aluminium but copper. Provided it's made shiny and polished, it's easy to solder to. Nathan JR wanted a link to a BFO oscillator. That is, an oscillator which when placed near an AM receiver allows reception of single sideband and CW signals. Almost any one transistor RF oscillator will do. It does need to be variable in frequency and for that it can be either free running or a ceramic resonator. It does need to cover the frequencies that you wish to hear on SSB or a subharmonic of it. That is, if you want to hear 7 MHz SSB frequencies, then your BFO can be on 7 MHz or a submultiple like 3.5 or 1.75 MHz. There is a good response to the videos on AM radio reception. Quite a few people were surprised about the number of AM stations we have in Australia. There wasn't actually much growth in their number from the 1930s to the 1970s. And if you had a commercial license, it was pretty much a license to print money. Australia was a late starter, but in the mid-1970s we got colour TV and then soon after FM broadcasting. That was initially confined to a small number of community and ABC stations, but commercial FM grew steadily in the 1980s, from a few stations in the early 80s to a situation where by the early 90s FM licences were highly sought after and commercial AM stations made the switch to FM. Those old AM frequencies, however, did not fall silent. They were taken up by narrow cast, ethnic and community stations. For instance, radio for the print handicapped, racing radio and ethnic broadcasting services. The national broadcaster, the ABC, pretty much kept its AM networks, using FM for its new networks of Triple J for the youth and ABC FM for classical music. There's still music on the AM broadcast band, but it's mostly stations in country areas and those catering for an older population. There's as many AM stations now as there ever has been, but the main difference is many of them are networked. However, the commercials and station IDs often give a local flavour and are the highlight of my listening. Multi J with a long name wanted to know whether a magnetic loop can operate on 27 megahertz. This was in response to the high power magnetic loop I described for 7 MHz. The answer is they can, but the loop needs to be a bit smaller. 
I would suggest around 70 or 80 centimetres in diameter. You'll also need a commensurately smaller capacitance. Still on antennas and Papa Rico wanted to know about the spacing of a 132 megahertz antenna. This was in response to a video I did on a 2 meter or 144 megahertz antenna. First of all, 132 megahertz is a lower frequency than 144, so the dimensions will be bigger. You take the dimensions for a 144 megahertz antenna and then you multiply them. In this case, by 144 divided by 132. That will give you a figure like 1.1. You multiply the dimensions for any 144 megahertz design by that factor and that will give you near enough dimensions for 132 megahertz. And just to cap things off, my Kindle ebook, Minimum QRP, has reached somewhat of a milestone, selling over a thousand copies. Thanks to those who bought and reviewed it to make it happen. Secondly, my website, vk3ye.com, is temporarily offline. It should be back early in the new year. That brings us to the end of 2015. Hope you've enjoyed all the videos and look forward to seeing you again next year.